Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Peter Sidwell and I'm here to bake for you. Now, as part of our Britain's Best Bake series, today it's all about the biscuit or the cookie, wherever you might be from. We're going to make the most delicious chocolate chip and pretzel cookies with a bit of sea salt, that kind of chocolatey, salty, bit of vanilla in there. It is going to be the most epic cookie you have baked in a long time. And after that, the famous wagon wheel. Do you remember wagon wheels as a kid? Oh, I loved a good wagon wheel. I'm gonna show you how to make them. They're amazing. Right, let's get started with the chocolate chip cookie. Now, if you go on Instagram and stuff like that, there are a lot of cookie recipes and there are a lot that claim to be the best. Now, what I've done is I've done lots of research. We've tasted a few, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, we've made a few, we've broadcast them, but then I went and fiddled again and I made my last cookie recipe just that bit better. And even Tom, my 11 year old, thinks these ones uh, epic and that is to quote an 11 year old so here goes right you start with 225 grams of room temperature salted butter and then we go in with our brown sugar so by using brown sugar it like makes it a lot more sort of caramelly and more depth of flavor so it's not just sweet okay and what we've got to do is we've got to blend the sugar and the butter together to amalgamate it before we add our vanilla. So, electric mixer. Take your time with this. If you were to go and make yourself a cup of tea and drink it while you were doing this, that's okay. You can take your time because you want the sugar to dissolve into the butter and be nice and light and fluffy before you incorporate anything into it. There are a few little key fundamental rules to follow when making cookies, whether it's this recipe or anybody else's. Cream the butter and sugar together really well. Okay, so that is really nice and light and fluffy. They, I absolutely love these cordless uh, KitchenAid electric mixers. They always remind me, do you remember that scene in Bake Off one year where Louis Traiano had two going yeah. at once, bless him, God rest him, he's not with us anymore. Um, but he was such a lovely guy. I remember meeting him a few times actually. But he had that famous scene where he had two of them yeah. and he was going, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, I know what you're saying, you mean. He was such a nice guy. I don't think he won. Did he win? Was he a winner? Maybe he was, wasn't he? Might have I think he maybe was, actually. Right, so, just there we go. Right, so, sugar and butter, nice, light and fluffy. Then we add our vanilla in, okay? Vanilla is sort of secondary flavour, but it, it adds that depth within the biscuit. And then large free range egg, room temperature, okay? Really important eggs that are used at room temperature because they are more elasticated when they are at room temperature than when they come out of the fridge. So even if you're over in America, and I know you all keep your eggs in the fridge in America, bring it out for an hour before you bake them, okay? So let's work that in so that we then end up with another amalgamation and of flavors. Speed it up a little bit. And then we go. There 
There we go. Now, remember, if you want any of the recipes from this series or any of the series that we've done, just type free book into the comments below. It will launch into Facebook Messenger, follow the instructions, and you will get the most amazing PDF free cookery book. All right, so type away. Okay, so a little bit of salt in there because salt and chocolate work really well together. And I know we've used a salted butter, but I've made a slight adjustment there. So if you only have unsalted butter, just up the salt a little bit. I don't really agree with unsalted butter. It seems a bit, bit odd to me, bit of a waste of time. Strong bread flour for these cookies. Not plain, not all purpose, and not self-raising, okay? Strong bread flour, straight in. Why do you use strong? That little bit of gluten, higher, slightly higher gluten content and strength in the flour helps make for a better cookie. Yeah. Um, the, there are a few recipes out there that, that go for it and say to suggest to use it. And I've done both ways and this makes, it, it kind of gives it a bit more structure and yeah. a bit more bite and a bit more, a bit more, I don't know. Oomph. Yeah, oomph. Good word. <laughs> Emily and I have a rule in our office. Only use words that you can spell. Double O M P H. Double O? Isn't it U M F P? <laughs> umph. umph. You can't even use that word. <laughs> no. Well, umph. I don't know. Somebody tell me. Type me in the comments. How do you spell umph? <laughs> I'd love to know. Oh, how many versions are we going to get now? <laughs> right. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. Half a, tea, half a teaspoon of bicarb, and this will help sort of give it a little bit of lift and a little bit of spread. If you don't put any bicarb in your mixture, the cookies won't spread at all. They just kind of hold in the shape that you mold them into. In with good dark chocolate. Here you go, Emily. I know you like a bit of dark, don't you? Yeah. In with a few cornflake crumbs, just because I like that. Um, and it gives it a bit more crunch. And if anyone's seen my milk bar inspired cookie recipe, ground up cornflakes are an amazing addition to your cookie mix. And then pretzels, mm. salted pretzels with dark chocolate. It's a combo, it's out there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save a few to put on the top, not that many. Mm. And I don't want the bits, a few broken ones there, booze, come on. And then in with our, the rest of our pretzels, okay? Now, do not over mix at this point. You've had your chance to mix, all right? You've beaten the sugar and the butter together. You've incorporated the eggs. Now you've added the flour. We need to be gentle, okay? So slowest speed and just bring the ingredients together. Big chocolate buttons, just let them break up. There's nothing worse than tiny little bits of chocolate. You can have a cookie, use big chocolate buttons or chunks, all right? If you wanted to, obviously, like, if you like, like a chocolate cookie, yeah. can you take a bit of flour out and swap it for cocoa powder? Yes, but you will find it probably needs a tiny bit of milk because cocoa powder sucks the moisture out of things. Um, and you've got to be really careful. So you might add a touch more vanilla or maybe a little bit of water in with your vanilla or milk. Yeah. Just like a tablespoon. If you add a tablespoon of cocoa powder, yeah. add a tablespoon of milk and that should bring the two together. So. But there is plenty of chocolate in here. <laughs> I haven't done it actually with pretzels and sort of double chocolate. But you could, you know, if you didn't want chocolate, I mean, why would you not want chocolate? Yeah. In a cookie. Little tip for you, if you want, if you've got loads of dough on your hook, on your mixer, just lift it out, turn it on full speed in the bowl, but out of the mixture and it'll all come clean like that, yeah? Okay, so that is our biscuit mix. Let's just bring it together with a spoon. Okay, there we go. And that is your cookie dough. Now, what I tend to do is use an ice cream scoop. Now, I have, I'll just get these pretzels in there for the top. I have set this recipe. This exact recipe will make exactly 15 60 gram portions, okay? This does 60 grams. Bless you, Emily. Thank you. 
She did well to hide that sneeze then until I brought her attention to it. That is a 60 gram portion or there or thereabouts, okay? So what I'll do is, if you get really sticky, just dip it in hot water, but at the moment we're good. This cookie mix will freeze really, really easily. Now, I think this mix is better left in the fridge overnight. Now, I know that is a big ask. You've made these cookies, you've put the work in, you've got the ingredients. Either double the recipe and put the rest in the fridge or the freezer for another day if you can't wait. But honestly, if you let this mix sit in the fridge overnight and firm up till it's solid, it bakes so much better than now. Because now it's at room temperature. The minute that hits the oven at 170 degrees, it'll just start to spread. Whereas if you fridge it and set it, it's colder then, and it takes longer for the cookie to spread so that you end up with a better shape. You, you get a bit more depth, it doesn't spread too much, and it just generally all round better. But I fully appreciate it's quite hard to wait. When you've made these cookies, you kind of want them, don't you? You almost need to make them before you go to work and they can <laughs> set in the fridge for longer. Yeah, you, you just, you got to make them before you want them, I'm afraid. Yeah. Preempting the taste. Yeah, preempt. I mean, when would you not want a chocolate chip cookie, basically? So you're always going to want them. So basically, get them in the freezer, get them made in advance. And you're there. I think you can have two because you were waiting for them for the first one. Double up, you see. Look, there you go. There's 15 there. Just wash my hands. Just bring that tray into the centre, Paul. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. Almost the centre. The other centre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right, so all of them. That's approximately 60 grams, and there's 15 of them. So you could might bake a couple straight away if you really need to, but bang them in the fridge, okay? Right, I made these yesterday. They've been in the fridge. I've just brought them out for about 10 minutes so that I can just flatten them a little, just a touch, just press them down, and then to make sure that you know there's a pretzel in there, <laughs> Put a pretzel on top and what you get is this lovely texture, a different texture than you would in just a normal cookie. You're getting more, which I think works really, really well. So bake these 170 degrees um, at halfway point. Just check them, make sure they're spreading a little bit. If they're not, if they're like cold out the fridge, they're not going to spread quickly. So just carefully take something like one of these halfway through, bring them out and just press them down a touch, just a little nudge, um, just to let them cook through and then they will be absolutely amazing. Now, luckily, I have got some that I made earlier. Right, these ones, already baked, kitchen smells amazing. The lovely chocolate chip and pretzel cookie. Now, here you go, Emily. Have a little try one of those, Carlos. Always. Chocolate chip pretzel <laughs> cookie. Don't make me throw it. <laughs> Frisbee it across the There we go. You get salty, you get chocolatey, you get vanilla-y. Mm. <laughs> it is a good cookie. A very good cookie. There's some left there for when the kids get back from school. If there's any. Mm. <laughs> While we continue to test these for you, this is how you make homemade wagon wheels. Homemade wagon wheels, what a treat. First thing you need to do is place your room temperature butter and sugar into a mixing bowl and cream together using an electric whisk. That way it gets nice and light fluffy. Add in your free range egg and your flour. Sieve till it gets all the lumps Sift the flour straight into the bowl and back in with the electric mixer. Once you've got a nice crumbly texture, transfer to the worktop, use your hands and compress the dough and roll into a sausage shape. Chill the dough and then slice into half centimeter discs. Place them on baking mat and bake in the oven. 
Once the biscuits are baked, melt your marshmallow and water in a shallow pan and pipe onto half of the biscuits. Add some jam into the center, I'm using raspberry, and then top with the remaining half of the biscuits. Now they're all sandwiched together, they're nearly a wagon wheel. Cover in melted dark chocolate. Spend some time, completely encase them so that they're airtight. Everything is coated in 70% dark chocolate. Then use a palette knife and just press the chocolate over the top and it'll help seal it so that you have the most delicious dark chocolate and raspberry jam wagon wheels. How good do those wagon wheels look? And now I know you want to get in the kitchen and bake both of these recipes. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next episode.